So Arup has a long history of supporting its employees to participate in pro bono work. I'd love to hear a little bit more about how that's evolved over the last 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah, well, I think it used to be more ad hoc. In other words, we found good causes and we supported them. And then uh, about eight years ago, we were marking our 60th anniversary and we had a discussion about um, how we should do that. And the usual suggestions came up, you know, we should publish a monograph on our work, we should, uh, we should give some public lectures and so on and so forth. And then we decided instead we would uh, engage with an appropriate um, uh, cause and provide uh, um, some money, but also, uh, importantly, our own services to that cause uh, and try, uh, try to mark our anniversary by making the world a bit of a better place. We decided that really fundamentally water and sanitation was the the issue that we could make the biggest impact with. And we now have an arrangement where we're picking one or two or three themes and doing those over a prolonged period of time. So it's a more, more organized campaign that we can do globally. Traditionally, we were more likely to just donate money uh, as a charitable gift at the end of the year. Money is a very simple thing to give sometimes. You write a check and you hand it over and you feel good, but it doesn't, you know, what, what does that mean? Whereas if we engage as staff members, as, as members of the community, as individuals and give our skills, um, that becomes so much more meaningful and it, it, it builds this groundswell in the firm of engagement and, and really shaping a better world. It's, uh, it's, it's really powerful. So uh, to me, there's been a, a noticeable transition in this region from just the gift of money to the gift of money plus time and effort and service and using the skills that you've really got in-house and in, in your own self. At Engineers Without Borders we're seeing a lot of graduates really come to us looking for companies or connections to companies that are participating in pro bono work. Have you seen a shift in or a trend in employee interests and motivations in this area? Yeah, no question. Uh, there's no question um, the, the newer generations of graduates are, are passionate about this and they really want some purpose in their employment. And uh, pro bono is one way uh, that people feel they can add purpose to their, to their daily life as an employee. The people that we have sent on overseas build programs or volunteering days, these experiences can be life-changing. I've seen people come back from them absolutely changed and their eyes opened and they're motivated in so many different ways. Um, so the personal experience can be immense and that's been really thrilling to watch. You know, what Peter said is right. It's a, it's a life-changing experience when you uh, personally confront the circumstances under which um, too many people in the world have to live. Uh, and when you see what significant difference to their lives can be made by relatively modest interventions that engineers can make, uh, it's, um, it's, it's a life-changing experience. I think for me spending time in the field gives you a whole new perspective on just how critical engineering and technology are because it's quite easy, I think, in our very modern urban environments to forget that it underpins almost every element of our, well, it is our infrastructure yeah, um, yes. and un underpins all of the services mm. that we have access to. Indeed. So, Yeah, the things we take for granted, uh, you know, the basic water and sanitation, uh, you know, we really take for granted here. But, um, you know, I, I think it's also too important to remember that we have needy communities in our own backyard. You, you don't you don't just have to fly a long way to, to, to volunteer. You, you know, in Sydney here, we have need right in front of us. And what, what we're trying to do now in, our, in shaping our pro bono activities is do about a third of work which is international development related. So the world's poorest people, you know, there are almost a billion people without access to safe drinking water and more than a billion without access to sanitation. A third of our work is in 
uh, in local communities, in the places where we, where we work, uh, and the backyards of the places where we work, and another third's uh, directed at disaster relief wherever that is. Uh, so we're trying to shape our activities in that way, and we network within the firm across all of the offices and give all of our colleagues a chance to, if you like, vote on you know, what we should support and where. Excellent. So we're starting to see a trend across the engineering profession. More companies are interested in taking a structured approach to pro bono work and, and volunteering. Do you have any suggestions or, or thoughts on um, how companies that are just starting this journey might participate more? I'd certainly encourage um, others to have, have the courage to, to start down this path. I think the best thing to, to start with is to engage with organisations such as EWB and, and just have a conversation. Uh, there's, there's help available to, to, to have where to start. I think talking to your staff as well um, and understanding what, what are they passionate about, what do they care about. Uh, we certainly listen to our staff and where they want to go because we know then we'll get the passion. What we're trying to do is look for things where we can make a difference to help communities help themselves. Uh, because charity for charity's sake might be a humane thing to do, but it's not a sustainable model. So we, we're looking for opportunities for communities to be able to help themselves, so capacity building of one kind or another, where we can make a real difference and where we're not needed in the future.